How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a wonderful holiday today. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, and I'm super excited. I was thinking about maybe taking today off, but you know what? I just couldn't stay away from you. You guys are wonderful. You're amazing. You're the reason that I do this. Um, so it's time to uh, get that uh, imagination all revved up and get into some creativity. As you can tell, it's a little later tonight than I usually record, but it's part of the creative journey and I want to share it with you guys and that means doing it every day and I'm committed to you guys and I hope that you guys are committed to your journey uh, so that being said let's uh, go get inspired and today's inspiration comes from one of my favorite um, current working animators and that's Sergio Pablos if you're not familiar with his work check right over here um, he worked on Rio and Tarzan and just a uh, truckload of, of great uh, animated movies I believe it was uh, Atlantis as well you can just see those poses that he gets into are just phenomenal. And I love how he can really push a pose really far, but still keep the character feeling the same. And that's a difficult thing to do. And if you don't understand um, what I mean by that is uh, trying to have the character remain looking like the character or what they call on model, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. Um, but that means that the character has the same type of uh, like body and muscle structure and facial proportions and all that while doing these crazy exaggerations. So you, you can recognize the character you know, instantaneously that this is all the same character, but in each one he's really pushing those poses so much. And that's a difficult thing to do. And I think he does it, it looks almost effortless, effortlessly. That's a difficult thing. Um, and look at these great facial poses, just just top notch. Um, so definitely check out more of his work. I know there's a great uh, mailman animation. It's, oh, I'm not gonna be able to remember the name of it, but it's, it's phenomenal. Let me pause it real quick. I just wanna get the name for, for you guys. Okay, sorry, it's called uh, Klaus. Um, and definitely check that out. Uh, just do a quick Google search, K-L-A-U-S. Is that right? Oh, yeah, beautiful short. Definitely check it out. It, it's worth your it's worth your time. It's worth your while. Just one of my favorite uh, shorts that I've seen in the last uh, few years. Really beautiful. Um, but I did want to share a quote that I found from him with you guys today, and that's: "Form and shape and appeal are important, but not as much as the message they serve." And I think that's an important thing that sometimes gets lost, especially with people who are kind of first starting out. You're thinking about, well, is my anatomy, is my proportions, is my shading, is, uh, you know, my weight in the right place, is, uh, you know, am I doing the, the right style, is my line work okay, is my, you know, timing okay, you know, for animation there's, there's a lot of different things on the... Uh, paintbrush that I'm using when I'm painting okay and just a lot of these more technical aspects but I like how he says that these things are all important but the most important thing is finding out what the message is and it, if that sounds a little highfalutin sometimes I think you could take it but I think it, you can you can simplify it doesn't have to be so much of a, a philosophical what is my message kind of a vibe but just what is what is the thing that you want to convey with um, your piece? So like right here, this just tipping the hat. Is that readable? Can you tell that he's tipping his hat? And it seems like a really nice fellow, a really great chap. This is another great chart too. I love that one. The, the way that he drops the watch out in that chart is, is awesome. So definitely check that out too. Um, so just focus on that. And then if you get that reading well, the rest is all you know going to support and help build up and strengthen the main idea there you know or this one you know scratching his head or his thinking or, or what's the you know the main idea of the time each of these poses or this one surprise or shock you know just so that you can get those things so they're readable so that the audience can connect with them so it doesn't have to be um i think sometimes i'm getting lost in too much of like what's my message i just i gotta find what my message is for my art like i think sometimes I don't, I don't put people down, but I think you can get a little too highfalutin with things and too overly thinking about meta stuff in the art and rather the art itself. But it's important to remember 
what is it that I want to tell other people? What is it that I want to um, convey to them? And what's the best way with the skills that I have and the time that I have to do it in? And how can I best work that? And I think that's an important thing to talk about. And uh, I'd love to hear him talk more. I'm, I can soak up anything that this guy does. He's just amazing. So definitely check out more of his stuff. I will throw a link in the description below. And let's get into some animation. This is the Santa rig. I figure since it's Christmas, uh, we should do some Santa animation, right? Should be pretty fun. It's a free rig you can grab over at Creative Crash. And uh, if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is we give ourselves 48 frames. It's two seconds of animation. I go off and I find a rig that I've never used before. It's a free resource for you guys to play around with as well. And we kind of go from there. A little bit of over the shoulder, hang out with me while I animate, and a little bit of instruction or guidance or talking through the process or just uh, the things that relate to the creative life in general. But the, the main goal or the message, uh, referring back to, to the thing here that I, that I want to share with you guys is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you to go off and create something today. And yeah, it's Christmas. I could be flaking out today, but I'm here with you guys hopefully encouraging at least even if just one of you goes off and creates something after seeing this, um, it'll be worth my while. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and get into uh, doing some animation. For this one, like I said, it is a little bit later, so I'm not gonna push too much. So we'll just do a cycle here for this guy. But I think it'll still be fun to do. Let's go ahead and push the uh, gate out a little more. We'll go ahead and tip the feet out a little bit as well. gonna be a heavy bag so let's go ahead and pull the hips down and let's grab the uh, chest here the spine let's bend that over like the weights over the back there and let's bring this one down here a little more okay feels pretty good and let's go ahead and bring this hand down and it'll help carry the bag here as well Santa's big sack here believe with this rig it already came constrained so that the um, bag and the hand will move when I move the hips so I won't have to worry about constraining the bag to the hand or the hand to the bag here um, but I will have to do it with this arm so that's something to be aware of as well and let's go push that elbow out shoulder just so we can clear the nose a little bit more. Maybe we could just tilt the head up instead there. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab the hat here. Rotate it in line there. 
<coughs> excuse me. I hope you guys had a lovely holiday today. And for those of you uh, who do other stuff today, I hope you just had a great day. You got to spend some time doing something that you love, or at least pursuing your dreams for another day. And getting another step further. We just want to create a nice storytelling pose here. This one, unfortunately, I uh, don't know if there's enough facial controllers in my eye rig. Seems like it's uh, So we had a good starting pose there. I feel like that's pretty good. We got some weight in there. <coughs> Jeez, seem to develop a little bit of a cough. Okay, so let's go ahead and save our file. And we are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. And let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives cube just so we have a floor here to kind of set our stage. And let's go ahead and go to frame zero. Again, we'll save our file one more time. Set our first key there. And set our frame range to 48. And let's get animating. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our feet and our hips. Once we get that locked in, we'll have a good portion of uh, the meat of our walk, or the kind of call it the meat and potatoes of the walk. And so that would be like the, the main bulk of the meal. Those are the big things we want to get done first at least in my workflow I like to do feet and the hips first and once we've got those working then we can get into some more of the fun stuff you know what I didn't do though that I want to do before I do anything else after I get these feet kind of locked in so I want to get that locator and the parenting done on the other wrist so we get that built in so let's go ahead and just look at the feet Let's go ahead and um, create a locator here. And we'll go ahead and pop that locator right behind that wrist of that hand that we want it to be on, just so that it'll move with the other wrist here. Hit drag. And then we're going to grab this. We're going to go to our outliner. just the locator here that should move the wrist as well did that right and then let's grab the locator and shift click the other wrist because that's what we want to pair it to and just hit p on our keyboard and now if we move this wrist it should move both of them and that's what we want to do and the reason we did it on a locator um, and this is just kind of a refresher i'm sure for all those of you that already know is just so that um, we can still have these things parented together but if we need to, we can go in and do some animation on this controller by itself. Whereas if we just parented it, them together without that locator, we wouldn't have that option. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and save our file just since we get that parenting set up. And then let's go ahead and do a little bit of up and down on our sim here. okay all right let's go back to the hips it's kind of funky let's do a little bit down and up and down and up and down and up down and then back to where we started let's go ahead and see that now i think i'm gonna probably do smaller ones because if we wanted to convey that that um, bag was a little bit heavy, it wouldn't have as much movement throughout. It would be a little more labored, so it would probably do less movement. So when you're carrying something, you know, you're not bouncing around if it's heavy, or if even if it's got a significant amount of weight, even if it's not too heavy for you, you tend to just kind of focus on what you're doing. So 
try and put that element in there. Okay, and then we'll go over to, let's actually already build in our passing positions on the feet. So we're just gonna go ahead and go back to all those keys we already locked in. We'll just hit S on our keyboard to make sure we really have them locked in. There was some animation built into this rig when I first downloaded it, so I did have to delete some of that. So we are probably going to have a couple little things that we got to clean up here and there. Like you can see right there, we had some slippage in the feet on those first couple of things. So just for cleaning that up. And again, we're just going to go in and uh, rekey all those main ones just so we make sure we have all the attributes keyed there. And let's go ahead and build in our passing position. So let's go ahead and lift that up. And we'll go down, lift it up down, back again, and we can go to the other foot, key them all in again, let's get our passing positions built here, so this is where it would lift up and pass the other one, and we'll probably do smaller steps, again if we want to make this feel heavy, we don't want big, really over exaggerated steps, so let's go ahead and grab both of them, and we'll kind of lower them, and even them out a little bit. Okay, let's see that now. Now overall, I think I'm gonna lower the hips even more. Just overall, and minimize them a bit more. They still feel a bit too bouncy, and I don't mind having some bounce in there, but if we want to convey that there's some weight to this, we're not gonna have them be too bouncy. And let's look at the feet here. Um, we do have a toe roll. Uh, it's not what we want. Toe tip, hip. Okay, see how it all approaches. So we're gonna drag the foot there. This side here, and then we'll drag the foot there, point out there, and we'll drag it there, and point out there. And one other thing I want to do is I want to push these knees out a little bit more. I feel like they're a little too inward. So let's go ahead and just push them out. Okay, maybe in a little bit more. Don't want to be over exaggerating there. And let's do a little bit of the toe action here. So let's go ahead and drag the toe tip around. It's not really the toe tip, the toe flap maybe. And there we go. Yeah, we want some toe flap so we get some change of uh, shape in our foot. And then we'll go here. Shoot, keep doing it. I want toe flap. We'll go ahead and lift it up there. Go two frames and we'll zero it out. And we'll go here and drag it there. Lift it up here. Go a little bit there. And zero it out. So let's see that now. finish this out we might need to raise the feet up a little bit more I feel like they're really just barely getting off the ground which is 
okay the idea but I don't want them to feel like they really are never lifting so I'm gonna give them just a little bit of lift built back up in there let's go ahead and drag that lift it up here and let's see what that Now that we added the rotate in there and the toe, I feel like we're really dragging them. And so let's go ahead and just kick them back up a bit more. Okay, and let's go back into the hips and let's start moving the hips a little bit over planted foot. So let's go ahead and translate X. So we'll tip that over there. Put it up here. Over there. And over there. And then we'll zero it out again. So let's go ahead and zero it out. Maybe we'll tone that down a little more. And I'm feeling like once we added that in, you can't really feel it up and down feels very, um, very flat across it, so maybe we'll have to crank that back up. We'll see. I'm not going to play with it just yet, but we'll see. See the up and down just doesn't feel as much there anymore, but maybe we can just offset that and delay that um, like a butt controller, which they seem to have here a little bit, so I might be able to do that that way instead. Maybe we'll just tilt the hips a little bit. There we can. Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit there, I guess. And go up that way. Alright, let's clean that up a little more. something funky with that. Let's see. Hmm. Well, hmm. maybe we'll just favor one side a little bit more. That way we can still get something. So let's go back to where we were. just tone it down so we're gonna instead of really being kind of even we're gonna favor one side so at least we can get some side to side there let's think both of those knees Let's do a little bit of rotate and see here. There. Just a tilt into those side to sides. And zero them out. Let's see. Okay. And let's look at the chest. So let's rotate. And Z here, so I'll get a little bit of squash there and stretch on that side. And there. And back the other way. Back there. And then we'll zero them out again. Maybe we can clean that up. Yeah. Tilt that down a lot. So get those rotate Z. We'll grab all of them. And we'll just crank that back to probably even less than what we're doing right now, but we'll see. And let's do, uh, let's even out the hips on Rotate Z. I don't think I did 
did that before I moved on here. Let's see that. Yeah, we need to do a little more up and down. So let's go back and we'll, we'll crank that up. Still probably too much rotate Z. So I'm going to scale that back a little bit more. And it's always okay to over exaggerate and pull back. I think it's a better workflow than trying to continue to just eke things forward and forward and forward forever. For myself, at least. And minimize the chest, rotates a little bit more. There we go. So I get that side to side. And let's do a little bit of, let's see what this hip controller does. Let's swing and then let's thrust. And I'll leave that at zero. I will take the sway and I'll do that. <laughs> let's make sure we zero that out again. Do that at three, so it'll go that way. And then let's swing out there. And then we'll make twenty one, we'll have it go the other way. And then yep, that'd be next. forward a frame. Like I said, one frame behind where the hips are going, and let's even it out here. A bit more. Let's go the other way. Feels like that's better. on here will add a little bit of compression to the chest. So back there, forward there, back there, forward there, back there, forward there, back there, and back to where we started. Okay, now this I do want to keep fairly straight and fairly neutral. We just want a little bit of this so we get that little bit of compression in the chest and add a little bit of We'll add a little bit of fleshiness to the belly. And then we'll have to offset this in the chest as well.
looks like it's just the rotate axes again. And again, we want to keep these fairly neutral, just a little bit of movement in there. It's not going to be exactly even, but this is one of the ones that I do tend to make be a little more precise with keeping them fairly balanced between the extremes. Because it's not something that I really want to see, it's something that we just want to feel. Big bag of tools there. Down and up. Down and up. Down and up. Down and back again. Let's see. Alright, that looks like it's two portions. I'll do these. to uh, six and start three, and then we'll go to eight. Should be rotate X here. seam will feel a little better. I think I'm going to tone down this midsection a little bit more. So let's see. Looks like I'm actually toning it up. I'm trying to make it so that the extremes pass so we can go back up for that loop. Just uh, gonna do this in a graph editor mainly here. So I'm just gonna go key selected on all of these ones for right now. And we're gonna do up starting. And I just want to do a little bit of that just so we have a little bit of give in the hands here. So I don't feel too stiff. There were some finger controllers on here, so I wanted to try and do a little bit of cupping here. Just a little bit. Let's see now. 
just so we have a little bit of slippage or a little bit of kind of keep alive here so that they don't feel too much like there's no movement through there. Okay, that was pretty good. Let's go ahead and see that now. Some beard controllers on this one. I'm curious, but it doesn't look like there's actually a controller for it, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. Let's see if we can do a little bit of movement in the hat itself. So let's break it up by doing uh, these three as a unit, and then those two as a unit, and then the last three. So just do a little. middle section by doing these two and we'll go at three this every 12 okay we'll do this every 12 frames here too for 15 and would be 27 and then 39 39 and we'll go back so I think that's gonna go right around
just delayed a frame. A little less loose, but as soon as the timing's not going at this the right rate, I don't want to hurt too. So let's zoom in. Sorry about that, it sounded like someone was playing with our back fence. I'm just making sure that it, uh, nothing funky was going on there. last piece here. side and then I have to be aware of this core panel in there. So I'll go back again. Okay. And we'll lift it up a little bit there. We'll go down. Lift it up a little bit there. Just so we're not intersecting right through the flange of the back. Let's controller. There is a little bit of a nose, so we could do a little bounce on the nose here. A little bit of movement at least. I'm going to do something. See if we can get a little bit of movement there. Mm, let's just do a little bit of that. Feels like it's a little too much. I want some movement in there, but not a whole lot. Let's add a blink in there too. 
to the eyes, make sure we're keeping that there. Um, going going back a little bit. Keep that. Or not can we just just go like this? Keep selecting. I just want to say keep it for sure. Let's see, there was one thing that said like show hidden control or something. piece and just delay one more frame. Alright, I think that works. Um, so let's do one more thing here. Let's go and grab everything here and we'll push it back. One frame there. So we still get a little bit of variation from our last frame to when we loop back into our first one. So we don't get those that two frame hold that adds a little bit of static in there. So let's turn our nerve curves off and let's go ahead and watch this to see if there's anything else we want to play around with before uh, we look back at where we started here. See if there's a little hiccup in here. I'm gonna check all of my uh, curves one more time here. Just make sure there's nothing funky going on in there. All looks fairly kosher there. Let's check those two. So before we finish that, let's go ahead and uh, save our file and let's create a more interesting backdrop for today. So I'll go ahead and grab this guy and we'll scale it in in X. And push it over here. And let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives uh, cube here. existing material, put that along on there, and that will give us kind of a little bit of a snowy kind of a color. And a little more, you know, festive spirit for today. And let's go ahead and play that. Seems. Maybe not just. 
just tone this last piece down here a little bit. a little bit cleaner. There's just a little bit of blip there. Now let's go ahead and turn our nerve curves off. And uh, let's take a look back at the uh, beautiful work that we were looking at before of Sergio Pablos. And he said, form and shape and appeal are important, but not as much as the message they serve. And I think that's important to just remember the heart and the meat of the message you're trying to convey. And uh, I hope that uh, through today's video, uh, you guys got a little bit more encouragement to go on and take another step in your journey, your creative journey, whatever medium you may be using, and got inspired. And, and I hope you guys just had a wonderful day today, no matter um, what it is that uh, you love in life. Hopefully you got a chance to spend a little bit of time doing it. Um, I love you guys lots. You're amazing. If you're watching this, you are the creative future. Uh, I had a blast sharing some fun with you guys tonight. Um, thanks again for all the likes and subscribes. And I think that'll do it for today. So that being said, we will see you for some more animation tomorrow.